Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to go to the first and the best since 2011. The finest investment banking in Bitcoin and crypto from Bank to the Future, Simon Dixon. Simon, welcome back. Thanks for having me in these troubled times. So, Simon Dixon, we are seeing trillions upon trillions of bailout money and quantitative easing being thrown around. What sort of money is being printed? What sort is not being printed? And who will benefit most? Because everyone's so preoccupied with the health crisis right now, and you know people have got other things on their minds, and you know everyone's in or people are in situations of desperate need at the moment. Um, the government is throwing everything they've got at it, um, and I guess they have no choice but to throw everything they've got. But at some point, um, the flow of funds and the financial crisis is going to become a reality after we get through this health crisis. And so what we're seeing right now is in other times of crisis, for example, the American Civil War, um, government simply printed new money called the Greenback, which is essentially debt-free money that uh, was introduced into the economy. Um, but what we're seeing right now is that the government is using quantitative easing, where essentially the central bank is buying uh, government debt and then that government debt is going to be used for all the different um, packages that they need to put together, including helicopter money, um, when really, why did they need to borrow that in the first place and why couldn't they just introduce that? Um, we're getting lots of interesting questions. They were debating whether um, accounts for these individuals were going to actually be created directly at the Fed, giving individuals the ability to have a Fed account um, which really got a lot of pushback from, obviously, the banking community that would much rather this be created in the normal way, business as usual, with a bank in the middle. So the flow of funds are going to um, really unquestionably have so many consequences, um, especially as we enter into the inevitable financial crisis after we get through this health crisis challenge. Well, the question people always had about the dollar or any fiat money starting you know, back in 1971 when the world went on a pure fiat money standard for the first time in history, the question was always, well, what backs this fiat money? And we'd hear from policymakers a lot of convoluted theories about economic schools and policies. Now in 2020, we know that nothing backs the greenbacks, the fiat money. It's just printed out of thin air, like many of us have been saying for years now. That's no longer an allegation or a theory. It's obviously pr uh, true. Uh, one big question people are asking is, well, now that we know that the money is simply printed out of thin air and backed by nothing, why do we pay taxes at all, Simon Dixon? This is a question that's stoking people to rise up, and there's a lot of social unrest out there because people realize that taxes uh, are a scam, that, that, that there's nothing backing the fiat money, and so why, not, why, do, why even collect taxes, Simon Dixon? Well, this is going to lead to undoubted questioning of everything. So this is really... I don't want to be dramatical, but this is a global reset in the financial system um, as a result of so many, so much happening as a result of this. You know, people are going to be asking questions that they had not necessarily asked before. Even the government can ask the question of why do we need to borrow it through the bond market um, and factor interest into these repayments when simply we could have just created it direct without the Federal Reserve in the middle. Um, individuals are going to be asking the question, well, you know, why bother paying taxes in these scenarios um, when we can see that the government's going to, you know, um, going to have to bail out anyway? Individuals are also going to be asking the question, which is what inevitably will lead to the financial crisis of, well, when I get my helicopter money and I've got my income right now, the last thing I want to do is use that to pay my mortgage in a time when I probably can't be repossessed. So people are going to be thinking of their own livelihoods and their own personal situation and conserving, and conserving cash. Um, and that will inevitably lead to mass defaults in the mortgage mo in mortgages, which then leads to the, 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 the collapse of the, the fractional reserve banking system, and then inevitably a bailout, which I'm forecasting will be the central bank or the government creating their own digital currency and essentially allowing banks to go bust without people losing their money by giving them the ability to open a wallet with the central bank. If they had $10,000 in their account, they then can open that with the central bank. And I think that we're going to see a real attack from central banks on traditional banks as we inevitably experience the, the ginormous consequences 
of essentially the world's largest regulated Ponzi scheme that we've seen in our lifetime called fiat money, currency and banking. You have a background in banking. Uh, you've been a Bitcoin and crypto banker since 2011. You wrote the book, Bank to the Future, and you outlined a lot of these issues with banks, and you've been studying money for decades now. I want to ask you a theoretical question, get your thoughts. In my view, as, as you've described the situation with all this money printing and debt monetization, and the government and the central bank taking control of the majority of the sovereign bond market, the, the majority of the corporate bond market, the majority of the mortgage-backed security market, and the majority of the stock market, are we not setting ourselves up for what you might, some might call like neo-feudalism, where you've got a few central authorities with 99.8% of all stocks and bonds in existence, and then everyone else is living essentially like a peasant. So you just have peasants and lords. I mean, I mean, think about that for a second. I'll move on. To, I got some other questions. So the Bitcoin halving arrives next month, Simon Dixon. Some call it quantitative tightening. Each block will be reduced to six and a quarter Bitcoin from 12 and a half Bitcoin in rewards. Tell us what you expect from this, Simon. So we're going to see a two-tiered economy. It's just what we're experiencing right now. We're seeing ever more control and something that looks increasingly more like communism from traditional fiat money as the government is essentially leveraging these, these assets and balance sheets in order to actually accumulate all the world's assets. Um, and, you know, in, 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 in this situation, I don't think they have any other choice either. So essentially, we're going to see this two-tiered economy. I mean, next is inevitable that people are going to need to get vaccines when that comes through. That might also lead to RFID chips being implanted and implemented so that the government can contract and control who's allowed out of their houses and all these things that are going to happen as a result of this, this health crisis, which is going to be integrated into their central bank digital currency, where governments all around the world are going to be scrambling and fighting to claim that you should be paying their tax because you live in one country but you did the deal on Zoom globally in another country, and two governments believe that they should be automatically collecting tax on that money. Um, so you're going to end up with a very, very horrible, worse version of fiat currency to the one that we have now created through banks as debt. On the flip side, you've got Bitcoin, which is a fixed money supply, the ability to own your own money, the ability to spend your own money, and a monetary policy that can never change based upon maths and code. So people are going to have these choices as fiat currency gets worse and worse, um, but obviously has the stability that in a very unstable market like today allows you to spend the goods. Um, but people are going to be, you've got this opposite effect where people are going to be experiencing, well, when the government make cash illegal because it might contain the virus, um, how is that going to affect that I can't control my money? It's all going to be done digitally. Um, and, you know, people are going to be able to contrast these effects when they try and send it to a Bitcoin exchange and the bank says you can't send it. People are going to learn for the first time. You know, Kraken had a 98% increase in USD deposits at their exchange because people are exiting fiat and putting that in Bitcoin. Um, and this is exactly what Bitcoin was designed for. Um, to give people this two-tiered economy as fiat currency exercises more and more influence and control and highlights the flaws in fiat currency, and people can experience um, uh, Bitcoin, which is the exact opposite effect of some of the challenges that they'll be experiencing with fiat. It's interesting that Bitcoin, uh, one of the layers in the stack of the Bitcoin protocol is the game theory layer. So the incentives are so finely balanced in the protocol that this very elegant game theory emerges. And we've seen it jump from the minor players from 10 years ago that to the, to the, to the, to the uh, countries on a sovereign level. The miners in different countries were dominating mining for a while, then that shifted back and forth to different countries. Now, as we head into May of 2020, and you have a full-on global fiat currency nightmare, and the Bitcoin is happening, it, it seems as though the Bitcoin is almost self-aware to some degree and that it's happening exactly at the right moment to game theor theoretically attack fiat. Like, 
it's almost as if Bitcoin was born to it to go to war with fiat on the highest possible level, on the sovereign level. So to lay this out a little bit, you're suggesting that the central banks of the world, they go digital as a way to exert more control. And you're saying essentially it's a, a model of communism uh, or Sovietization of the global economy, total top-down control vis-a-vis -vis digital currency, which opens up the possibility of multiple regions taxing people from different countries, which is another nightmare. Concurrently, Bitcoin takes a quantum leap through the happening. It's already the hardest money ever known to, to humanity. And to own it is an act of civil disobedience. Would you agree that owning Bitcoin and buying Bitcoin is equivalent to civil disobedience, Simon? Well, really, it's an exit from the traditional financial system. On my YouTube channel about 2010, I created a video called The Great Depression of 2020s. And really, I was just following the trends that the fiat currency is a Ponzi scheme, and therefore it, 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 it inevitably ends up in this scenario. Now, I didn't know what the event would be that would actually do, that would expose the weakness in the traditional financial system. But I said it would be a black swan event and it will expose the systemic risk in the financial system. Now, obviously, there was a financial crisis at the time, and they used financial engineering in order to create the largest, you know, an incredible bull market that was 100% fabricated upon financial engineering, injecting money into different markets. Um, and at the same time, Bitcoin was born. Um, the video I think I created was just around the exact same time that Bitcoin was born. Um, we first met at that conference um, in Prague, where uh, we discovered that. And really, these were the conversations that were being had, that there is going to become a time and a place in the world where people need an exit from the traditional financial system. And to me, I see this as really um, an, 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 a, an, a force that the world is actually going to need um, as something that actually gives people the choice that they need you know, obviously, Bitcoin is not good for paying your rent and your mortgage because of the, the price fluctuations. Um, but, you know, we live in a world where uh, these types of volatility and price fluctuations are becoming an inevitable part of everything that we do in a world of, you know, um, deflationary events like this that inevitably lead to hyperinflation as you um, have to resolve this. Um, and you're going to need to reset the financial system um, and use financial engineering that will inevitably lead to a more controlled, um, tighter version of fiat money and a world that we're not used to living in. A good point about the volatility. Everyone was complaining about Bitcoin volatility, and then the stock market said, hey, hold my beer. All right, so Simon Dixon, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me, Max. That's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I want to thank our guest, Simon Dixon, CEO and co-founder of Bank to the Future. If you want to contact us on Twitter, it's Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.